If dinosaurs and humans were created on the same day of creation, as the Bible teaches, and once walked the earth together, it's logical to conclude that humans would have left behind at least two different types of evidence. First, similar to how we take pictures of places we visit and wildlife we see in modern times, those living hundreds or thousands of years ago would likely have drawn or carved pictures of dinosaurs and dinosaur-like creatures, as well as many other animals. Indeed, as we've addressed in other videos, as well as in articles and books, it seems that's exactly what they did. Second, just as we tell stories today of things that we've actually seen and heard, ancient people would have also told stories about dinosaurs if they ever saw and encountered these creatures. People often refer to stories of the distant past as legends. Although sometimes told in a believable fashion, Many legends, no doubt, are pure fantasy. They're filled with imaginary people and animals performing all sorts of unbelievable, magical, mythical deeds. Rip Van Winkle sleeping for 20 years under a shade tree, or Paul Bunyan and his blue ox creating Minnesota's lakes with their giant footprints can be categorized as legendary characters performing imaginary feats. Other legends, however, are not so fanciful. Stories that are ubiquitous, included in reputable historical writings as factual, and supported by science cannot reasonably be disregarded as just unbelievable legends. Take, for example, the legend of a worldwide flood. Stories have surfaced in hundreds of cultures throughout the world that tell of a huge, catastrophic flood which destroyed most of mankind and that was survived by only a few individuals and animals. Furthermore, there's a lot of scientific evidence suggesting the occurrence of a universal flood sometime in the past. Ancient worldwide stories of a worldwide flood are exactly what we'd expect to find if a worldwide deluge ever actually happened. But what about dinosaurs? Is there any evidence from history that humans lived with these reptiles from the past? Are there stories of humans seeing and possibly interacting with large reptilian creatures that possessed massive tails, fearsome teeth, hefty legs, horned heads, and more? Indeed, a wide variety of stories of large reptiles have been passed down through the ages from cultures all over the world. Many of these creatures sound very much like dinosaurs or dinosaur-like marine or flying reptiles. However, in the stories, they're never called dinosaurs because the term dinosaur, meaning fearfully great reptile, was not coined until the early 1840s, when fossilized dinosaur bones were first discovered and reconstructed in modern times. The name previously attached to these fearfully great reptiles was dragon, from the Greek dracon. Have some, perhaps many, dragon legends been embellished over time? Absolutely. Just as people today tend to embellish the size of a fish they catch or of a bear they see while hiking, people in the past said things about dragons that undoubtedly were exaggerations. Such inaccuracies, however, do not negate the overriding truth that fearfully great reptiles of many different shapes and sizes once lived with humans, any more than the differences in worldwide flood legends mean we must discount the idea of a universal flood. Were legends of dinosaur-like reptiles only to appear in a handful of cultures around the world late in history, one might well argue for their dismissal in legitimate historical discussions. However, there's actually a vast amount of testimony from all over the world for these animals previously called dragons. Many of the same historians, scientists, and authors who were adamant that dragons were purely mythical creatures often testify to their ubiquity of dragon legends. The famed 20th century evolutionist Carl Sagan admitted that the implacable mutual hostility between man and dragon is not a Western anomaly. It is a worldwide phenomenon, he said. Evolutionist Kerr Than acknowledged that dragons are found in the myths and legends of cultures all around the world. Although the 1996 edition of the World Book Encyclopedia claimed that dragons did not really exist, they admitted every country had them in its mythology. 
Evolutionist Daniel Cohen confessed that people all over the world have believed in dragons. Several years ago, Animal Planet aired a program about dragons that incorporated legend, alleged scientific facts, and various theories, including and especially evolution. It was a highly publicized film that put a spotlight on dragons. Although it was far from a legitimate documentary, several statements from the film reinforced the worldwide nature of dragon stories. Within the first minute of the pro-evolutionary program, the viewer learns that there is one creature remembered in the legends of almost every human culture that's ever existed. A creature depicted with remarkable similarity by the Chinese, the Aztecs, even the Inuit who live in a frozen land where no reptiles are found. Even they have stories of this animal, the dragon. Cultures from different continents, people who had no contact with one another, yet all of them had stories describing the same mythical animal. Whether evolutionist or creationist, skeptic or Christian, everyone seems to be in agreement that dragon legends are universal. Second, regardless of one's religious beliefs, virtually everyone also agrees that dragon legends are characterized by their long-standing tradition. In his book, History Begins at Sumer, Dr. Samuel Kramer observed how the dragon-slaying theme was an important motif in the Sumerian mythology of the third millennium BC. The dragon seems to have always been in the mind of man. Animal Planet declared, this is the animal about which humankind has throughout our history been most compelled by. Though we would highly disagree with Science Digest extended evolutionary timetable, the journal suggested the earliest dragon-like myths may have originated as long as 100,000 years ago. Dragon legends have been with humanity since the dawn of recorded history. Dragon legends are not merely cute stories that our ancestors began telling in only the last few centuries. They've been told all over the world for thousands of years. Such antiquity and ubiquity deserves an adequate explanation. Why did ancient peoples all around the world tell stories of large reptilian creatures with serpentine necks, elongated bodies, enormous tails, hard skin, stout legs, spiked backs, knobby heads, fearsome teeth and claws, snake-like tongues, horned or crested heads, and some with bat-like wings? Evolutionist Daniel Cohen admitted, no creature that ever lived looked more like dragons than dinosaurs. The 1997 edition of the New Encyclopedia Britannica referred to dinosaurs as gigantic prehistoric dragon-like reptiles. In 2003, a nearly complete dinosaur skull was excavated in South Dakota. The long, knobby, spiky skull appeared so similar to ancient descriptions and paintings of certain dragons, the dinosaur was named Dracorex, meaning dragon king. Evolutionists contend it's a dinosaur that's 66 million years old and looks like a dragon. In 2011, fossils of a huge extinct flying reptile were excavated in Australia. The pterosaur had an estimated wingspan of 21 feet. When a study of these fossils was finally published 10 years later in 2021, one of the scientists working on the project said it's the closest thing we have to a real-life dragon. The fact is, the only reason to reject what appears so obvious and be surprised of the similarities between dragons and dinosaurs is if a person buys into the faulty, assumption-based evolutionary timeline. As evolutionist Daniel Cohen confessed, the problem is time. As far as we know, all the dinosaurs died out over 70 million years ago. That long ago, there were no people on Earth. So who could remember the dinosaurs? Renowned atheist Carl Sagan speculated that humans may very well remember dinosaurs. He recognized the ubiquity of dragon legends and indicated that the pervasiveness of these stories is probably no accident. Dr. Sagan hypothesized that dragons posed a problem for our proto-human ancestors, of a few million years ago. He then specifically addressed dinosaurs and dragons in a series of questions. 
Could there have been dinosaurs that escaped the extinctions in the late Cretaceous period? Could the pervasive dreams and common fear of monsters which children develop shortly after they are able to talk be evolutionary vestiges of quite adaptive baboon-like responses to dragons and owls? Notice that even Dr. Carl Sagan, one of the foremost evolutionists of the 20th century, could not get around the fact that dragons sound eerily similar to dinosaurs. Such speculations on the origin of dragons would be meaningless unless one believed that dragons and dinosaurs appear, at least sometimes, to be one and the same. Still, the best explanation that Dr. Sagan could conjure up while still holding on to some semblance of the faulty evolutionary geologic timetable is that our very early baboon-like ancestors encountered dinosaurs and passed their memories of them on down to modern man. Another evolutionist by the name of Kerr Than also attempted to explore what may have inspired the look of dragons. Surprisingly, Kerr Than acknowledged, of all the creatures that ever lived, pterosaurs probably most closely resemble the dragons of European legend. Reptilian and featherless, pterosaurs flew on wings of hide that were supported by a single long and bony finger. The smallest pterosaur was the size of a sparrow, while Quetzalcoatlus, named after the Aztec god, had a wingspan of more than 40 feet, making it the largest flying creature ever. Indeed, we agree with Kerthan on this point. Extinct dinosaur-like flying reptiles with large wingspans, claws, slender tails, and toothed beaks more closely resemble many dragons by a considerable margin than any animal alive today. Incredibly, Kerthan's number one explanation for dragon legends centered around not animals, but comets. He wrote, to people living in ancient times, a comet streaking through the skies with an icy tail millions of miles long would have closely resembled such a creature. If comets were the inspiration for some dragons, it could help explain why dragons are ubiquitous in the myths and legends of so many different cultures in all corners of the world. Are the litany of ancient dragon legends around the world indebted to comets for their existence? Such an idea is simply nonsensical. The explanations of dragon legends from leading evolutionists over the past half century are bizarre and irrational. If it were not for the evolutionist commitment to their faulty billion-year timetable, it would appear they would have had few problems accepting what is so obvious, that dinosaurs previously were called dragons and humans once lived with them on Earth. Though evolutionist Daniel Cohen admitted no creature that ever lived looked more like dragons than dinosaurs, he went on to say that since dinosaur fossils are supposedly millions of years old, we have to assume that dinosaurs died out long before anyone could remember them. We must assume, he wrote, that dinosaurs have nothing to do with dragons. In truth, the problem is not with dragon legends and dinosaurs, but with the assumption-based, faulty geologic timeline of evolutionists. The reasonable view is the biblical creation view, that humans and dinosaurs were created by God during the creation week and thus once lived together. The stories of their interactions were passed down from generation to generation. When you take the time to really think about it, that's exactly what we'd expect to find if humans once lived with dinosaurs, ancient stories of dragons from all around the world. In reality, the biblical and historical evidence fits together perfectly. If you'd like to learn more about dinosaurs, the Bible, and history, as well as creation and evolution, be sure to visit us at apologeticspress.org.